Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today in gaming, Mass Effect Legendary Edition was revealed. Apex Season 8 arrived, Insurgency Sandstorm got a major update, and much more. Mass Effect Legendary Edition got a new trailer showcasing all of the visual enhancements being made. While some of them, like the abundance of lens flare, are drawing scrutiny from folks on social media, the general leap in visual quality is pretty astounding. The remaster includes all three Mass Effect games, but Mass Effect 1 is getting particular attention due to its age. Gameplay and weapon balance is being refined for all three games to present a more consistent experience. That means some significant upgrades to Mass Effect 1's combat and AI. I wouldn't expect Mass Effect 1 to suddenly play like the sequels, but it should feel much more modern than the original release. It'll also offer controller support out of the box on PC, so no mods required. BioWare didn't carry through much of the Mass Effect's artwork and gameplay directly to the sequels. The female version of Shepard, for example, changed dramatically from the first game to the third. The remaster updates all three games with a unified appearance for her character model. Likewise, every character model has been enhanced across the games, giving them more lifelike faces and higher resolution textures. Beyond the visuals and gameplay tweaks, there's no big story additions or character changes in the remaster, so no cut content is being added back or anything like that. The endings for 3 are also from the extended cut edition of Mass Effect 3 as those are considered canon despite being added with post-launch updates. It will include all of the original DLC for all three games though. That's 40 DLC in total, including missions, skins, locations, and more. As for technical enhancements, all three games will support 4K 60fps output on the Pro slash Next Gen consoles. PC will offer an uncapped frame rate. The remaster is being done in Unreal Engine 3 due to technical constraints, so unfortunately no ray tracing or cutting edge tech. But you can expect significantly faster load times on all platforms and a button for skipping elevator loading screens. Overall, Mass Effect Legendary Edition seems like a great starting point for anyone new to the franchise. While the original games are all incredible in their own way, Mass Effect 1 in particular hasn't aged so gracefully. Its story, characters, and worlds are all outstanding, but the gameplay feels outdated compared to the sequels. The remaster might be dividing fans based on its copious use of lens flare, but in all other regards, it sounds like a massive leap forward for some of gaming's most important titles. The remaster will be available on PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the next-gen consoles via backwards compatibility. It launches on May 14th. Apex Season 8 is here. The star of the show is the new legend Fuse and the overhaul of King's Canyon, but there are some exciting changes worth mentioning in the patch notes. A damage counter has been added to the heads up display that shows your total damage for the match. Pinging weapons or ammo in your inventory will show your current ammo count to your squad mates. Wraith's hitbox has also been made slightly bigger since landing shots on her is more difficult than most legends. Rampart Sheila HMG's angle of view has been increased to 180 degrees. Her wall health during build phase has also been increased from 1 HP to 45 HP. These two changes should give her a lot more flexibility to use her utility mid-fight. Octane's launch pad has been reworked to make the different jump profiles more accessible. Jumping while standing will launch you higher, but not as far. Crouching when using it will launch you farther, but lower. Both of these jump files were already present in the game, but using them was messed up by the double jump mechanic. Everything should work as intended now and be much more intuitive. The last two big changes are Caustic's gas now goes away when his team is eliminated, and Mirage's decoys make footstep sounds. All of these changes combined don't amount to a massive shift in meta or anything, but they're all very welcome improvements. And despite rumors and leaks suggesting Apex was launching for the Nintendo Switch today, so far nothing is launched aside from the Season 8 update for existing platforms. The latest update for Insurgency Sandstorm has launched. Update 1.9.1 adds two new assault rifles, the QBZ-97 and the QTS-11. It also makes some pretty big changes to the game. The update removes competitive matchmaking from the game entirely. The devs say its removal was prompted by competitive not feeling like Sandstorm was intended to play and low usage by players. Game stats are being overhauled to streamline the process. New end screens have been implemented to communicate your performance in a match much better. Unfortunately, the overhaul means the weapon stats menu has been temporarily removed while the devs finish building the new system. 
One of the more controversial additions added to the 1.9.1 update was new cosmetics themed around the Chinese New Year. They were revealed about a week ago to incredibly mixed reaction from players. In general, Sandstorm's cosmetics haven't looked very premium, but the new cosmetics looked a bit more Fortnite than tactical FPS. Based on the mixed reception, the devs decided to remove the new cosmetics from the update before launch. Google is shutting down their internal Stadia game studio. The original idea for Stadia was that Google would use it as a platform for both third-party titles and first-party original games. They set up two studios in Montreal and Los Angeles to build games, but it turns out making games is actually kind of hard. Google's statement about the shutdown says creating best-in-class games from the ground up takes many years and a significant investment, and the cost is going up exponentially. And while Google is shutting down internal game development, they're continuing to support Stadia as a platform for other games. Game streaming has come a long way in the past few years. Despite the poor marketing for Stadia, it is actually a pretty solid service that provides a lot of value to gamers on the go or who don't have access to high-end hardware. Popular indie title Tabletop Simulator made a big oopsie recently by relying on Google Translate for its localizations. Typically, this task is handled by people that speak the native language of desired translations to ensure accuracy and grammar. And while Google Translate is certainly a powerful tool, its understanding of grammar is notoriously rudimentary. This leads to some hilariously awful translations in many cases. Specifically for Tabletop Sim, many of the translations aren't just low quality. Polish players are saying that their version of the game is unplayable because the text describing things makes absolutely no sense. The update that added these translations also implemented Steam Workshop localization support so community members can submit better translations. AMD's latest GPU driver promises a 9% performance improvement for The Medium. The game launched recently and is proving to be a system smasher of a game. Even high-end PCs are struggling to maintain a fluid 60fps at high resolutions like 1440p and 4K. AMD's driver update also fixes several bugs like display flickering and issues with CAD software. Before we get to our final story today, just a quick heads up that EA is doing their quarterly investor call around when this video goes live. If there's any big Battlefield 6 news, we'll cover it as quickly as possible, so stay tuned for more news coverage either tonight or early tomorrow. The Anomaly mod for Stalker just got a major update that's been in the works for over two years. Version 1.5.1 implements a 3D PDA device that helps you navigate the open world, a new four-part story quest, improved weather and atmosphere, and overhauled ambient AI. And Anomaly is really more than just a mod. It's essentially a fan-made sequel to the original Stalker trilogy. It's built on the open source and community-enhanced X-Ray engine. It offers its own story, areas, characters, and more. It's also designed for modern PCs, so it's much more stable than the original games. While I wouldn't say it's the best starting point for people new to Stalker, it's certainly worth checking out for returning players. Considering the developers behind the iconic franchise are currently working on a proper Stalker 2, I'd say now is as good a time as any to get stuck in with the franchise. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.